those um, spheres are not in themselves the sphere of the political. So there's a separation of the political sphere from the, from the moral and certainly from the religious, That's obviously famously so in the American case. It doesn't mean that the state doesn't in some oblique way depend on, uh, on those spheres, that, that if people become completely demoralized uh, and completely um, lose all religious sense, then of course it could be that the state also suffers um, you know, from it, that it's no longer able really to rely upon on customs that it needed to rely upon in order to function. And I think that might be true. Uh, humour is very important, <laughs> um, and uh, also s satire of the opponent. You know, and uh, uh, it's very difficult because, um, as I was saying earlier, moral relativism has a tendency quickly to become a kind of absolutism of its own. You know, so that if you're making judgments or if you are revealing that you have some source of values which you regard as sacred or holy or outside this, you know, just personal choice, then, then people do start abusing you, uh, and that's, uh, that's undeniably true. But um, in, in the long run, you know, uh, you, you can stand up to that, uh, and things, things change. People, people might abuse you for, as a fascist or whatever for, for 10 years, but uh, you know, when the, the results of their worldview are being felt all around, around them, they might come back to seeing, you know, she was right all along. You know, and that, that, uh, that's, that, I mean, to a very small extent, I've had this experience. I, I, I was, um, when I started coming out, um, as a conservative, in the, about, around about 1980, uh, it was to the immense shock of the academic establishment, and there were lots of. I had to sue people to, uh, you know, to um, be, for libel for things that were said. Uh, in, um, and there was a BBC program uh, with the sound of marching jackboots behind, uh, you know, somebody commenting on my on something I've written. <laughs> uh, uh, that, that every, everything was done to make it look as though uh, this was the, big, the, the, the thin end of the fascist wedge. And um, uh, for a long time I was very disheartened by it, uh, uh, you know, uh, and you can feel very, very distressed. But uh, things have changed now, uh, and um, you know, a great many people think that, that po possibly I wasn't totally wrong about everything. Uh, and a certain habilitation, rehabilitation comes about. Uh, you know, I, 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 um, there was, I, I was sort of kept out of the British Academy, for instance, by all the old left establishment, um, Volheim and Williams and Isaiah Berlin and all that crowd. And then, you know, they, they all died. Uh, I, I, um, I have to say, I was out of the country at the time, had nothing to do with it, they just died. Um, and uh, the next week I was ma made a fellow of the British Academy, you know. So that was a sure sign that perhaps things do change. That certainly is true. Uh, um, obviously, it, that we, we, I mean, we all have plenty of examples, uh, uh, if, like just basic human relations. Uh, families have, are differently constituted, and um, uh, and yet can live side by side, although. You, ha you know, still there might be a question of whether you have to be tolerant in, in order for this to happen. 
and uh, toleration means perhaps accepting that it isn't that you know, your neighbor isn't living in the right way but nevertheless it's not for you you have no right to interfere and that's the very normal uh, um, position to take I suspect in in Western societies and um, we don't go through life thinking that every question is to be settled by a moral absolute uh, I mean we are negotiating creatures and that's especially true of, of us Europeans because our, our systems of law emerge from negotiation they're not they're not dictated from on high by God um, unlike the the Sharia uh, they they are um, they are the results of of discussions over many hundreds of years even in the English case a thousand years so we, we're used to the idea that um, that we don't settle all our questions by moral absolutes but still we might need some of those absolutes in order to begin yeah. it, it, it seems to me that maybe the maybe the worst uh, outcome uh, for a society that, that completely embraces moral relativism is just a reassertion of the idea that might is right and, mm. and sort of power politics do you agree with that or is there a worse well, outcome th there is um, this is a quite interesting point in the 1960s um, you know when the I wouldn't say the fall of man began then but uh, <laughs> nevertheless things did change right. um, in a radical way uh, very popular at the time uh, it was not just the the relativistic morality of um, of the uh, you know the student revolution, but the philosophy that that um, that rewrote morality as a system of power. Right. And this is uh, obviously Foucault was the the most important person in this, uh, and the the. The basic argument in Foucault's writings, and they, it's an argument which comes ultimately from Marx, is that um, moral judgments have no intrinsic validity. Uh, they, they are a part of ideology which, um, whose reality has to be understood in terms of the power relations that they vindicate or endorse. To, to know what is being said by a moral judgment, you must go behind it to discover the relations of power which are being um, concealed by it right. and made to look legitimate uh, and um, once you think like that uh, you, you think that you have an absolute right to overthrow those relations of power mm -hmm. because they, they have no ground other than themselves mm -hmm. uh, and with them overthrow the morality that goes with them in um, Foucault's four volume Histoire de la Sexualité um, which I'm sure some of you know, you, you discover what this all at work, you know, this overthrowing of every possible system of sexual morality as a mere legitimization of power relations, uh, which um, in particular historical contexts. And um, that's been very influential, of course, on adolescent, on the sexual behavior of half educated adolescents, mm -hmm. um, not fully educated or completely uneducated but the, the, the ones in between. Uh, uh, and uh, Foucault, of course, is, is a very important thinker in that he's sort of made the postmodern world through this kind of way of thinking. Well, I understand the problem uh, um, because obviously it's being talked about everywhere uh, 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 and in particular the, um, the Hungarian situation. Uh, uh, <clears throat> my, my view is that one, one should not look for political si solutions to this, the, pro the problem that we've been discussing today. We're, we're, we're talking about something that goes to the heart of personal life and personal relations. Um, we are, it's as though the the the, um, the the enlightenment has finally come home to us, you know, uh, and what it means to us, uh, and we 
many people feel you know, that, that there's an urgent need, a worldwide need, to find some other foundation for uh, um, the moral life than religion. Now, I, um, it, I'm skeptical that there really can be that other foundation, but certainly it can't be politics. One of the problems with communism is that it did try to provide an alternative foundation, not just for political order, but for the moral life, uh, and to recruit everybody to a, a kind of militarized equality, which people have rejected, uh, um, because they've seen that it, it disenchanted human uh, society completely left people demoralized uh, and in in opposition to each other about everything uh, um, harmony can can come about however not through politics it can only come about because people uh, r recognize the, the the value of their own life and the value of the life of those around them and that's something that has to be created through their own efforts right. uh, in America, a book called uh, the, the Closing of the American Mind, um, the author talks about some of the effects of, of what you had mentioned, the, the, the pessimism and the, and the skepticism, uh, the, the dismissal of truth claims that, that came out of the 1960s. And he talks about it in, in, in the context of the university, uh, such that, that students uh, don't inquire after knowledge or, or, or uh, seek after truth anymore. Uh, and, and he made a, a rather outrageous statement that he, he saw that as being somehow a worse situation uh, than even the, the maybe religious wars that were happening uh, yes. in, in Europe. It, do you think that's a little far-fetched, or is he trying to get at something um, that, that, you know, possibly embracing that, that sort of moral relativism and it eroding the foundations of justice or as laws we talked about previously uh, in, the, in the case of Britain? It has some, some, somehow a, a, a deadly effect on civilization in, in the long run. Yes. Uh, um, <clears throat> well, there is a, a tendency of people in, in universities to, um, to think that what's going on in the university is what really matters. And that was the case with Bloom. Uh, uh, when, he's when he was talking about the closing of the American mind, he really meant the fact that he couldn't talk to his students anymore. Mm -hmm. uh, and outside the universities, there are all kinds of natural, normal Americans still existing, uh, going about their business, uh, going to church services. You know, America has remained a, 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 devoted, a devout Christian society through all these things, at least if you're outside the cities. Okay. Uh, and also, if you're outside the universities, a basically decent society. So, so, um, so the fact is that it, it, it wasn't as bad as he thought. Right. Um, it was just bad for him. Yeah. <laughs> but, it, but he had a point <clears throat> because what he was saying was that, uh, that the relativism had made it impossible for him to teach the, the curriculum as though it had any objective authority. That was really what upset him. You know, you couldn't say to, to the student, look, uh, you know, um, uh, here, here is Shakespeare, uh, uh, and um, just look. And here is Steinbeck, you know, um, just look. Surely you've got to see that that first thing is, is not just better, but, but touching on the human reality in a right. deeper way. And the students will say, that's your, your view. You know, I've got my Bob Dylan, uh, you know, uh, uh, and, which is, you know, a million times better than what they have now. Uh, and... Um, you, you know, th there is a pro problem if you can't discuss, if you can't teach the old curriculum in the humanities uh, because of this relativism. What are you going to teach students? Right. Uh, and um, increasingly, um, people teach pseudosciences instead. You know, the, uh, the deconstructionist analysis of, of yeah. Steinbeck or. Um, or instead of teaching aesthetics, neuroaesthetics, you know, uh, um, not knowing quite what that is. It's, uh, it, you know, it's Beethoven plus brain scans. Well, is after all moral relativism that big of a problem? If it only amounts to maybe differences of opinions and occasional renegotiating of the, uh, the political structure, is it, is it really that big of a problem? I would say that, um, that we have to be much more 
careful of our institutions than moral